Welcome into another box review here at Momentous Struggle. I know I've been a little behind on these and I wanted to catch up and give a little bit of talk to some of the boxes that we had coming out so I can do a little bit more of an in-depth review. And I th But honestly, I think that's probably a good thing here because we can sit there and really look at where some of these models have gone to and where, where they have found places in the meta and maybe explore a little bit more about where they potentially could be in the future uh, based off of information that we now know. So basically th today we're going to be talking about the Cad Bane, Aura Singh, and Bounty Hunters box that we ended up getting uh, quite a little ways back here, but we do want to take a look at the Fistful of Credit Squad pack. Uh, I think it's a Cad Bane is a very unique character in some of the things that he brings to the table. Aura Singh is kind of underplayed at this point in time, but the Bounty Hunters are st starting to see some play. Uh, so let's go ahead and kind of just jump into what they have. We want to talk a little bit about what they bring and what we can do with these guys here. And I do want to say very quickly, if you do enjoy the content that we have been providing, please give us a quick like, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, let us, that way you know any time that any future content does come out and anything along those lines. We do appreciate each and every one of you for listening and watching our content. So first off here we have Cad Bane. Cad Bane, Notorious Hunter. He comes in at nine squad points, only two force. And there's a reason for that that we're going to definitely get into. Um, and he is only Clone Wars era, so he is not a cross era character. So which begs the question that maybe we'll see another Cad Bane in the future because he has shown up in other Star Wars content later on down the road. Looking at his abilities card uh, we do see the full name again cad bane notorious hunter he does have the tags of bounty hunter mercenary and scoundrel he has two active abilities first one is how about you step aside for one force choose an enemy character within range three and an active objective that it is contesting the chosen character may dash away from the objective then after any movement any move our moves are resolved if the chosen character is no longer contesting the objective it gains disarm if the chosen character is still contesting the chosen objective it gains expose and strain so you're putting a question to your opponent of whether they want to continue to control that objective or not well at least contest that objective or not and basically if they do or don't they are going to have a couple of different things that happen to them uh, obviously getting two conditions on a character is very good if they decide to sit there and contest that objective. So there is really not a upside to this. There's more along the lines of which downside do they prefer to have. So I do like this ability. It's a very interesting ability. The other active ability he has is rocket boots for a force. Each character in this unit may jump. Basically, this is jetpack on a bounty hunter, so to speak. Uh, a non-Mandalorian is probably a better way to put it. So that that's those his two active abilities. One reactive ability, no one gets between me and my job. This is also one force. After another allied unit makes a combat action, if the unit is not engaged, it may use this ability. Choose one of the target characters when they're in rage four. One character in this unit deals two damage to the chosen character. If none of the target characters are within range 4, each character in this unit may jump towards one target targeted character. So you either can do some damage or get some out of activation movement for a force. Really like this. It really is pretty interesting. Keep in mind with this ability, he cannot be engaged. So you really do want to kind of keep him back out of the fight, not engaged. He, to use this ability, he is very good in combat, so sometimes you're not always going to be able to do that, but it is a reactive ability. It does give you out of activation movement. Very good ability in my opinion, but it, there is the there is some positioning that needs to be taken into consideration when using this. And his last ability, this is his identity. I'll take on any job for the right price. When an allied character wounds an enemy unit, after that effect is resolved, refresh one force and one character in this unit may recover then if the allied character is a bounty hunter refresh a force so here comes into why he has such low force or at least what compensates for not having that large force pool from the beginning is he allows two force you need to be aggressive to get a two up to a two force refresh if you build the around that bounty hunter build you don't necessarily have to do that. And, and I'll, we'll kind of go into a little bit here now 
where some of his places are. He has been seeing a lot of play with, dro- with the droids b- because he can take Kalani and the B2s all in one one giant uh, under his squad. So he will not take advantage of that bounty hunter extra force in that particular situation, but he does get one force refresh whenever any character within your strike force wounds somebody else. So very, very good. He does do very well under with him paired with Dooku because you get so many triggers. And that's where he's been seeing a lot of play as of late. Of course, as more bounty hunters do come out in the game, and we do know from Adepticon, we are going to be seeing more bounty hunters in the future. So as we start seeing more bounty hunters, he might start finding other homes. But right now, that seems to be where his home is. Let's go ahead and take a look at his dance cards now. All right, so his stance card, at least on the, this is the first one of his stance cards. He has two different sides, as most primaries do. The first one is needs no introduction, and I have to say, that is very true about our friend Cat Bane. He, but on this side, this is the more, a little bit heavier on the ranged attack side. He has eight attack dice at range four, only six melee dice, six and five for his defensive dice, six being on the range side. So he is a little bit happier to be at ranged with this. He has a pretty straightforward tree. It starts out with step number one, doing two damage, splits up to where you can either do a damage and a jump or a damage and a recover, then goes back to step three three where you have your first shove of his tree doing one shove and two damage and again it splits to two different ones if you go the top route it's going to give him a pin and a damage and then a jump and a damage if you go the bottom route it's a disarm and a damage and then a shove damage and recover so very interesting tree a lot of movement here potentially either two jumps and a shove or two shoves and a jump. If you get the full tree, keep in mind you're normally not getting the full tree though. Um, Looking at his expertise, he has his LL30 blaster pistols. One expertise gets you a crit. Two to three gets you a crit and a strike. Four plus gets you two crits and a strike. So very good overall for a primary uh, on his wrist mounted flamethrowers at one only gets you one strike so not the best of expertise charts here this is really something that if you are in melee you're probably not going to be want to be on this side unless there's something specifically on this that you're wanting to do on on this particular stance tree two to three is going to get you that crit and a strike and then four plus gets you two crits and a damage Expertise for defense is a little bit better here than you're going to see on the other side. Not by much, just on that first line. But one to two gets you two blocks. Three to four gets you two blocks, a recover, and a jump. So a little bit more out of activation movement. And then five plus gets you two blocks, a crit to a a complete failure, a recover, and a jump. Now keep in mind... It's going to be very rarely that you're going to get to that 5 plus simply because he's only rolling 6 defense dice. It is going to happen. Uh, Dice do what dice do. But this is not going to be very likely. Again, you're probably looking at maybe that 1 to 2 range is going to be your consistently where you're going to be for that expertise. So, But 2 blocks for 1 is amazing. So that is definitely something to... Take, take a look at um, if on your defensive side, you're probably going to want to be here for the most part when you end your activation with them, uh, if you are able to. Uh, again, staying on this side is probably your best if you're going to be at range. This is probably where you're going to start at because he's going to be staying in range for the most part. But let's go ahead and look at the other side of his stance card. And here is the other side of his stance card. It's as long as I get paid. And that we know that Cad Bane likes to get paid for sure. So this one, like I said, a little bit different, a little bit even more even on the dice that you get. You still rage four for his attack. Uh, so seven dice there, seven dice in melee, six across the board on your defensive dice. So again, might want to be here if you're going to be getting more, and if you know that you're going to be in close combat. But again, his expertise chart is not as good, and we'll get down to that, uh, at least on, on the defensive side, it's not as good. But we'll get into that uh, here in a, in a little, few moments. Hit this stance card is a little bit more straightforward. Again, only five steps down the tree, though. So we're looking at first step is two damage. Step number two is a disarm and a damage. Three is three damage, and then it splits. You can either go up or down. If you go up, it's a damage and a strain, and then a 
pin and a damage. And then if you go down though, it's a shove and a damage and then two damage. So a little more damage here, uh, a little less movement, a little less displacement, uh, but there are some more conditions. So it really is a matter of what you're trying to accomplish with CAD, which side you wanna be on. Like I said, personally, I think I would start on the needs no introduction side uh, and then maybe go back depending on how your game plays out, deciding which play size do you want to be on. So looking at his expertise chart for the LL30 blaster pistols, a little bit better here for that expertise. You're looking at one still gets you the crit, two to three is now going to get you two crits, and four plus is going to be the same as on the other side, giving you two crits and one regular strike. Looking at the wrist mounted flamethrowers, it is going to be a little bit better on this side again where one is going to get you a crit instead of a strike. Two to three is going to get you two crits instead of that crit and a strike. And then four plus is going to be the same as well, getting you two crits and a damage. Now, as I was saying before, the dog uh, tenacity is a little bit different, a little bit weaker here, but not by much. If you see it, three to four and five plus are still gonna be the same, uh, but one to two is only gonna get you one block. So three to four still gets you the two blocks with a recover and a jump, and five plus gets you the two recovers with a crit to a failure with that recover and jump. Overall, that's Cad Bane, like I said. In originally, I think he has a good place right now going with the Oops All Droids list, running him alongside Dooku, but who knows what the future holds for Cad Bane here. He's got the Bounty Hunter, the Mercenary, the Scoundrel tags. There may be a place for him in the future. I know that looking at the Hondo box coming out, that does have a little bit of synergy with Scoundrels. Um, there's not really bounty hunters in there though, so I don't. There's not going to be as much synergy, but he may have a good place as we get more bounty hunters coming out. Because as I said, we do know that there's a bunch of secondaries coming out in that box with all the different bounty hunters. Um, again, he's but he's not. Those mostly are not going to be in the same era because he is only Clone Wars. So we'll see. We'll see what comes out. See if there's a sister box to go with him. But let's go ahead and jump into the secondaries and supports. Aura Singh and the Bounty Hunters. Aura Singh hasn't seen much play uh, since this box has been released. I think part of that has to do with really just one thing. She's a five point cost character. Uh, she is still Clone Wars, has Bounty Hunter, Mercenary, and Scoundrel tags, and Zero Force, just like most secondaries and supporting units that we've seen up until this point in time. But that five point cost really kind of hurts her where all you can either do with most second, most primaries only being eight points, you really have to take her with a three point cost character. So it just doesn't mesh well with what we have as primaries at this point in time. That may change in the future, but I still think she's a, got a solid kit. It's just a matter of she doesn't really have many places to see play. So let's look at all of her abilities that she has. She doesn't have any active abilities. She has three reactive abilities though. The first one being double the contract, double the payout, which is one force. After a character in this unit makes a attack as part of a combat action, this unit may use this ability. One character in this unit may make a five dice attack targeting a character in a different enemy unit. Basically, she gets an additional attack for one force. Really good. Uh, that. That, that is in conflict, though, with her next ability because this runs off of the same triggering event, which is her hit and run ability. After a character in this unit makes an attack as part of a combat action, this unit may use this ability. One character in this unit may reposition. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, though, is you can use this to make her, you can use double the contract to make an attack, and then on that second attack, use hit and run to reposition. So there is some synergy there just within her own kit. Uh, her last re reactive ability is Payday, which we'll see also is on the Bounty Hunters. But for a force, after you reveal an order card, any order card, this unit may use this ability. If it does, this unit gains one tag of the chosen ability or the chosen tag of your choice until end of turn. So you can basically make her have any tag, which was fantastic. And her last ability is Expendable Distraction. When a character in this unit makes a range attack as part of a combat action, if the defender is engaged with one or more allied characters in, in 
characters in units that are not wounded, you may add an additional three dice to its attack roll. If it does, choose one of the choose one of the engaged allied units. The chosen unit suffers two. So basically, you hurt somebody to add a couple dice to your to add three dice to your attack. I really like this ability uh, because you could just you know, if you have a primary that's, or let's say you have a supporting unit that is sitting on four health, you can sit there, or even three health, you can sit there and do some damage to them to sit there and add some additional dice to your attack to help you get through the, her tree if you wanted to do something like that. Overall, I think she is a solid character, but again, it's kind of hurt by that five point cost because she just doesn't have a lot of places she can slot into very well. But let's go ahead and take a look at her stance tree. So Aura's stance card is the not asking permission, which is pretty on brand for Aura. Uh, she does have a five ranged attack and a melee attack. Her range attack is seven dice. Melee is six. Now keep in mind, we can add three dice to that range attack in some situations, making it a 10 dice attack. So pretty solid there. Five across the boards for her defensive dice. That's ranged and melee. And looking at her tree, uh, the farthest you can go down is six though. So adding the dice may not always be the best way to go. She does have a shove at three. So not as far down as we would like to see with her. So looking at her tree though, it starts out with the first two are where you absolutely have to go. Sh uh, pin and a damage, then two damage and a strain. Now after that, you can either go up or back over. If you go up, it's a shove and a damage and then shove and a damage again, and then a climb or a scale, I should say. No, that's a climb. Climb and another damage. So going up the up route basically is only gonna do you at most five damage. If you're going across, after that two damage and a strain, you got another two damage, a damage and an expose, a reposition, and then another two damage. So at most eight damage there. Again, usually not getting that far down the tree though. Uh, you might with if you had those three additional dice, but again, that's where you're looking at is at most eight damage, potentially one more depending on the expertise chart. So if you're range, she has her custom sniper rifle one, Expertise gets you one damage. Two to three gets you a crit and a damage. Four plus is going to get you two crits and a damage. In melee, just one uh, expertise will get you a strike. Two will get you a crit. Three plus gets you a crit and a strike. Expertise for her defensive side, that is her dexterous, dexterous dodge. One to two is going to get you a block and reduces a crit to a failure. I do like that. Reducing anything crits to failures is always good in my book. Three plus gets you a, another block, still that crit to a, dam, a failure, and then one climb. Overall, not too bad of a kit. I think like I've beaten the horse to death here by saying, Five point cost just doesn't have a home for her at this point in time unless you're running her with CAD or you're really wanting to, you're okay with reducing down to having a three point cost character. So I think she's a fun character, fun to play, but just not finding her way in that competitive scene if you're playing, if you're going to your local game store trying to play in a tournament or something, really not making rosters at this point in time. Let's go ahead and look at the bounty hunters though. Rounding out this box, we do have the supporting unit that is the Bounty Hunters. The Bounty Hunters are, again, pretty unique. They're a four-point cost character, but these guys are actually cross-era. So they do have multiple eras, which is kind of nice because they are going to have a lot of different homes. They are Galactic Civil War era and Clone Wars era. They still have the tags of Bounty Hunter Mercery and mercenary and scoundrel, but they also have the tag of trooper. They are four point costs, zero force as well. They do have a active ability on the trail. At the start of this unit's activation, each character in this unit may dash towards an enemy character. Very good ability in a prime and a supporting unit to just get a movement from both of your units is each character in this unit can make that dash so both characters are dashing towards an enemy unit they have one reactive or active ability that is tools of the trade for a force choose one of the following effects choose an enemy unit within range three the chosen unit gains disarm 
or characters in this unit may have sharpshooter 2 and impact 2 until the end of turn. So you can do this, do that tools of the trade, make a focus action, adding three dice to either your melee or ranged attack. So really solid if you're just trying to punch through some last damage and make sure that you have those attacks. Last one is Payday. We talked about that with Aura Singh, basically being able to give any tag to any of your characters. Solid supporting unit. They just can fit in anywhere. They could, if you just need another unit to fill out your roster and you're just not sure how to sit there and fill it out, these guys can definitely fill a role for you, putting in a supporting unit wherever you might need them and to fill out and have that tag of whatever tag you necessarily need. So they are pretty good, but let's take a look at that stance card and see what they have there. So for a supporting unit, this is a pretty straightforward stance card. Not too, not too much uh, to write home about. They do have six dice at, on both of their melee and range attack. So that is uh, a range of 5-2 five five though. So a pretty decent range attack as far as range is concerned. Five dice, if you add the sharpshooter, it could get up to nine dice. But you don't really need to just simply because they only have five steps on their tree to begin with. So... Defensive dice, five for range, four for melee. Looking at their tree, it starts out with two different options and then narrows down to one and just goes right across, stays on that one line. Basically, it's if you go the top route, you get a shove on one with a damage or taking two damage. So you do have a shove right off the bat with these guys, which is really nice. The second step gets you a damage. Third gets you a pin and a damage. Fourth is a, another shove and a damage and then expose. So you're not doing a lot of damage with these guys. A total of four, depending on your expertise as well. But there is some pretty decent shove, pin, shove going on if you get four down your tree, which is really nice. And then that last expose at the end, really good to do a second attack into them if you have your bounty hunters attacking into the same person so they're exposed and maybe not be able, not be able to stop some of those additional attacks of yours. So not too bad. Looking at their range attack, they have the SE-14 Blaster. One expertise gets you a strike, two plus gets you a crit and a damage. So overall, you really don't want to be rolling a lot of expertise with these guys. That's another reason why you may not want to always add all those additional dice unless you're really trying to push something through. They also have their bash, which is their melee attack. One gets you a strike, two plus just gets you a strike and a damage. So an additional damage off of these guys may happen on their expertise chart, depending on what's going on. Overall, though, not too bad for a supporting unit. Their expertise for defense is called Patchwork Armor. One to two is going to get you one block. Three is going to get you two blocks. Four plus is going to get you two blocks and a recover. Again, not going to see that very often unless you have hunker tokens to sit there and roll some additional dice because you're only rolling five or four. I don't really see you getting to that four plus very often. Uh, dice do what dice do, as I've said before. So there is a possibility you can get that, get there with all of that. Well, let's go ahead and close out our episode here or this box review and uh, give you my final thoughts. Overall, I think this is a pretty decent box. Cad Bane has found a very good home in the current meta. And I think as we get more models, we'll definitely have more places to go with this particular in this place or saying she isn't really has a home yet there i think there's more places for her to be but if you run her under cat and you just want to run an owl bounty hunters squad i think she's a pretty solid unit i think as we get more bounty hunters and more things that will have those let those tags that she has matter more we might end up seeing more play out of her which will make her a little bit better but the bounty hunters just the supporting unit of the bounty hunters being cross era, being able to just get any tag they want, I think are pretty solid. They are four point costs, so they're pretty average as far as point costs are concerned. We haven't really seen any fours. We have seen some threes, but overall, I think these are a good unit. I do think we should, if you are, I think this is a good buy. I think this is a good box to get. There is a lot of utility Within these, especially like if you're playing droids right now, having Cad Bane to sit there and add into your droids list is definitely very, very good. So those are, that's my closing thoughts on this. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I do want to thank each and every one of you for watching our videos. And may the force be with you.